Gary Edwards influence the writing of High Flying Bird? One of the things that was really thrilling about his work was here was my a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, Andre uh, Holland, who is their executive producer, who put the book in my hand, uh, The Revolt of the Black Athlete. And uh, it was his 50th anniversary when we were starting to write this. And so he put it in my hand and he was very emotional about it. Um, I don't know if you know this about Andre, but he comes from an a, a athletic background. He played uh, baseball at FSU. And that's actually where he was at school before he then changed into theater or to get his BFA in acting. I think what was important about that moment was here, you know, he, he was explaining to me basically um, that by looking at how um, industry codified its way around athleticism, um, that the same strictures, the same fissures, the same discrimination that, had, that op occupies most industry was in this place where black bodies were being used to make capital. And it was stunning. It was stunning to me. It, 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 I, I couldn't believe that I had been so naive not to see it before. Um, and so, you know, um, reading the book, going through pages of it, watch, listening to the conversations on YouTube and in other places, listening to the conversations between Andre and uh, Dr. Edwards, really made it Im Im important to me to understand and really delve into this movie, not in the flash that we get seen on the sort of uh, the, the five second reel, right? The, the, the beautiful, uh, incredible art that is made in the grace of sports. That's great, but that's sometimes used to distract you <laughs> about, again, an industry that may not be providing for its most valuable players in the way it should. Um, and again, there are outliers to that. You know, we we hear we hear more often than not about the huge deals that are going on, you know, the millions and millions of dollars that are being made by player number one, two, and three. Um, we don't often hear about unless we really watch the documentaries that come on later at night um, about the players who who go away with with, with nothing, um, or with aches and pains, or with concussions, or with you know mental illness, or PTSD, or you know all of the things that accompany the job. Uh -uh. And for us, we just wanted to really pull back just as slight as we could the veil on that. It's an amazing screenplay. Oh, thank you. Um, th there's also a, a quote um, that um, I kept on thinking as I was watching this film mm. from Dr. Edwards, mm -hmm. which was uh, dream with your eyes open. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's some, you know, and it's something, again, I'm probably going to get myself thrown out of a whole bunch of parties for this, but there's something that, you know, amongst black actors and artists uh, in the industry, we, we talk about often. That, we, that when we dream, we still have to keep our eyes open because there's always some moment where we, we are asked to compromise, um, we're, we're asked to, um, uh, to denigrate what we do, uh, we're, we're asked not to bring our full self to the table, um, and those little, those little moments add up um, in big ways. And sure, we are, we're not in the days of uh, the, the outright discrimination that, that happened previously, but there are still moments where you know that you are being asked to do something in a way that another artist of the same caliber or at the same level isn't. Um, you, you know you're not, we know that there, you know, it, we know that other artists, especially black women, are being asked to take money, le less money than they're being, uh, than their counterparts are being offered. Um, and we've seen that happen in, in, in cases that are, again, amongst those who should be of, of an elite caliber. And I think if we just, Again, look at those athletes and look at and look at how some of them dream so big and they have and they're closing their eyes dreaming about that draft day. They're closing their eyes thinking about that first year playing and they're closing their eyes thinking about getting their mom a house, a car and and they're not seeing fully and surely what what they're really being asked to do or what they're really being afforded. Um, and so, yeah, it's a it, it's a great quote. It's one that I'll now say. A uh, little, little fun moment here, just to finish off. Sure, so tomorrow, sure, sure. Sorry, stop talking we, about all this uh, stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, we're going to give Stephen the Founders Award. We've only yeah. given this three times. Oh, so dope. the first time was with Chris Nolan, mm. and then the next time with Anthony and Joe Russo. Oh, wow. And these are filmmakers that have really given back to our community yeah. after having the sh their first showcase at the festival. Mm -hmm. Stephen's a little bit different. Mm. Stephen already had you know, a great showcase mm -hmm. at, at Sundance with Sex, Lies, and Videotape. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless... He has supported and um, helped launch careers of several um, Slam Nuts alumni. And mm -hmm. I've got some of their questions for tomorrow when mm -hmm. we do a discussion with him. Mm -hmm. So the question, I, you know, the question I have for you, actually, is do you have a question that you would like to ask Stephen to, uh, tomorrow uh, when we have that founders discussion? What where, question would you like to ask Steven Soderbergh? Steven Soderbergh, where is your Instagram page? 
That is my question. Where, where you, you capture visuals so well. We can't get your, where's your, no, I'm just mad. I mean, like, you know, like he's immensely private in that way. But I think, I think one of the things that you're saying that is really great um, about him is that he does help launch careers, but he also gets to know artists. Um, my connection to him is through Andre because they would talk during the Nick. Um, and he didn't have to sort of go, hey, I mean, again, I hadn't won an Academy Award when he decided it was okay for me to write this script that he would shoot. Um, you know, I was still a person who had been doing micro-budget films here and there. And so um, his ability to do that, I, I just wonder what what feeds that energy? What feeds that um, that need to sort of, you know, reach out to artists in that way? Um, not that I should question it, because why? I look a gift in its mouth. But at the same time, I, I would, I, I'm fascinated by the fact that he's hungry to do that. It's a great question. Oh, I'll ask thanks. Him that. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks.